Good morning. Today's reading is Luke 15 verses 11 to 32 and it's chapter 67 of the Jesus 100 book. Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got all together he had and set off for a distant country and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that old country and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare and here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son and threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robes and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it and let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And so they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field and when he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your father has... Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he's back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. He answered the father, look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. You never even gave me a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, who has squandered your property with prostitutes, come home, you killed the fattened calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. This is the word of our Lord. I was lucky enough last night to go and see Matthew Bourne's Sleeping Beauty. Very visual, very evocative uh, uh, ballet. It starts off with a bit of script that sets the scene. The king and queen can't have a baby, so they go to the dark fairy and beg her to give them one. She does this and unimpressed by the way that she is thanked by the king and queen, she curses the baby and then moves off into exile, living a hurt and sad life. Compare this to the reaction of the father in the prodigal son. Quite often when we hear about the prodigal son, a great emphasis is made on the reactions of the two brothers. But here I want to think about the reaction of the father, because for me, that's the really important part. He has been wronged. He has lost his son. But when the son comes back, the father is delighted. The father revels in it. The father has a party. He's an accepting father. He's a loving father. He's a forgiving father. He's something I would have loved to have been. Reminds me of another story where, and I have no idea if it's true, a famous director is eating lunch in Hollywood and a woman comes up and says, I have a sick baby. I need £10,000. Will you give me £10,000? And he writes the cheque for the £10,000. Well, it'd be dollars in America, wouldn't it? But anyway, he gives the woman the money. After the woman leaves, concerned friends turn up to the director and say, you do realise she's just conned you out of 
And the director smiles broadly and goes, you mean there isn't a sick baby? Now me, I'd be, how dare she? I'd be hurt. I'd feel manipulated. I wish I didn't, but I do feel that. And many of us do. When we're cut up in the car or when something doesn't quite go the way we want it to. We get angry with the other person or we get hurt and we carry that around with us for quite a long time. I can look back and see there are things that I still haven't forgiven decades ago. So I would love to be like that director and see beyond that. I would love to be like that father, wouldn't we all? And see beyond the hurt. The beauty of those two stories is they illustrate the way God is with us, that he sees beyond the things we've done wrong. He sees beyond the hurt. And he's just grateful and loving and accepting when we turn to him and go, whoops, or I'm sorry, or I've been away. He just stands there, sits there, open-hearted and welcomes us back in. And I imagine it with the biggest and broadest smile that anyone can actually have. The pleasure when we turn back to him, I imagine, is enormous. I find it quite difficult to forgive, as you've heard. One of the things we can do with that is pray for the other person, the person that has hurt us. Pray into asking God to give them everything that we would want for ourselves and our families. Now, sometimes I find that incredibly hard to do. And I know people I've spoken with find it hard to do as well. Sometimes we need to start the prayer with, Lord, I want to forgive. I want to not hurt. And I don't know how to do it because I'm not succeeding on my own. Will you help me? Just that little line of saying, I know this is good for the other person. I know this is what you want me to do. But at the moment, it just seems too big. Will you help me? Is the way to start that process. When you go through today, I hope you have an absolute carefree day. But if you don't, turn to Lord and say, how do I do this, Lord? And a prayer. Heavenly Father, is it really true that I can come back to you, that I can be forgiven, that I can begin again. Thank you because you tell me in this story of the prodigal son that your answer is always yes. Amen.